Okay, so something I was struggling with in my mind is how exactly these adjustable slash rebuildable ball joints work. So we're gonna take one apart real quick so you can see. Now, the instructions that come with your kit do you have a very detailed diagram of the parts here. And we're gonna go over those, just how they go together. Um, this is a kind of a critical piece right here, this little roll pin, you don't wanna lose that. So when you're taking it apart, make sure you're taking it apart in an area where you can, if it does fall out, you can catch it. Okay, so let's just take it apart here so you can see how it comes apart. First of all, they say, the directions say, that come with it, <clears throat> to press this in uh, with it assembled, but to take the dust boot off, okay? So we're gonna take the dust boot off. Now, <laughs> the only issue with that is, in their video on YouTube, they say, press in the body by itself. So they mean disassembled. So there's the dust boot, it's got a little concave surface. The convex surface, of course, goes to the outside like that. We're gonna set that aside. So we're gonna unscrew the stud. Okay, so there's the stud and the ball end and this threaded cap is what they call it. We're gonna set that just there like that. Now inside here is the bearing. Now this lock ring, pay attention to how it goes on, <clears throat> or lock washer. They already have tabs bent one way. See how there's two tabs that bend down? So those always go here, okay? onto the body, like that. These tabs are the ones you bend down. These other tabs here are the ones you, that you bend down to um, engage with these. Okay, so we'll set that aside. And out comes the bearing. That's actually the bearing, okay? Concave there, flat on the back. So that index is right there on the ball joint. Okay, then the other part, is this preload washer is what they call it. And it does have sort of a side that goes toward the body, okay? The indented side goes toward here and you can see there's a little indentation there that that sits in, okay? So make sure you just have a little grease where you're reassembling this if it's upside down, that that gets engaged uh, and stays in place when you drop it in, okay? And then the other part is that little pin inside there. Now this little pin you will fall out, okay? So that's what it looks like. So put some grease in there so it holds it in place, especially if you're doing this upside down. I mean, with this like this, right? You don't want that to fall out of place. So put some grease in there to hold it in place. You can see how easy it pops out there. Okay, now that indexing pin has to line up with that slot right there. There's only one slot in the top of this bearing. And so when you go to put this together, if you put it together like this, it won't go in all the way. You have to rotate it so it drops in. Okay, our pin's still in place right there. And that lines up with this locking tab right here. Now we're gonna take this and orient that the same direction. And drop it in place. Also, you can, you know, it's you can't really grab this cup or this bearing but you can kind of jam your finger in it. Hear that clicking? That means the pin's engaged. Okay, so we'll just screw it back together here. Now, of course, if you're rebuilding this on your vehicle, the goal is to be able to rebuild this on your vehicle. It's going to be upside down. So you're going to have to be able to get underneath it safely, right? And, uh, <clears throat> use some grease to keep all the parts in place. So don't forget to put your seal back on concave side toward the ball joint. And it does kind of press in around the edges there, so make sure to get it seated nicely. Okay, and then you're going to use the adjuster tool, or they also call it a crow foot in the instructions. And uh, it's just sort of a spanner wrench that goes over like this. Okay, and you can't really index it like you know, if you're one off, you can't really index it well. So you have to be pretty much opposite of each other like that. All right. So, you know, just I just kind of snugged it down by hand. 
um, cause this is only 10 foot pounds. Okay. Which is 120 inch pounds. And I don't have a quarter inch drive. That's a quarter inch hole. I don't have a quarter inch drive torque wrench. Um, this is a three eighths drive torque wrench, but it does do inch pounds. So I have it set to 120 inch pounds and a little adapter there. And of course in the instructions, they say, and they have pictures of how you should align your torque wrench. So you don't screw this up because it needs to be in line. This torque wrench needs to be in line with your wrench there. Okay. So then you just torque it down to the spec and uh, then your ball joint is preloaded appropriately. Now the instructions, be sure to read the instructions. Don't rely on this video for everything by all, by any means. But when you uh, do get this installed, you should check your ball joints for vertical play. And apparently there's a small tolerance for vertical play. I think it was five hundredths of an inch is what they put 0 0.05 inch. Uh, that's allowable. Once you do get these installed, if you do have more play than that, they're saying you may need to put a little bit more torque on this, more than the regular 10 foot-pounds. Okay, now we're going to pull the dust boot off again real quick. I'm going to show you the mistake I made. Don't make this mistake, okay? So in my ball joint press kit, I have a bunch of, I mean, it's got, you know, a bunch of adapters in it. And so I was trying to figure out how I could press this in because the manual instructions that come with the uh, ball joints say to press it in assembled. Um, and like I said earlier, the video shows them pressing this in, just this part, just the body, disassembled. And so what I did was I put this on here like this because that's how I've pressed in my other ball joints. And of course, this is the part that goes over the end of the ball joint press, right? And it actually jammed on here. And so because that didn't seat up inside, now I've got this part stuck on the stud and I can't get it apart. So that was super frustrating. So what I ended up doing was um, disassembling it and then holding this and then tapping this out. And so that finally worked and I was finally able to get it apart. It took me like 30 minutes to get that apart. So I'd recommend against not, not doing that if you don't have the correct fit to fit around this right here. They say don't press on the ears, obviously, but you need something that sits right on the rim there or right inside the rim uh, because that is not a good solution. So I did just uh, disassemble this, got all the parts out, and we're gonna take that off, we're gonna take that off, we're gonna take all the parts out, including the little pin, okay? Make sure you keep track of that. So I have a clean little work area that nothing else is gonna, you know, knock everything off, and then you can put this, press this in, and then go ahead and assemble all the parts. Okay, now we've got the ball joints pressed in, I just flipped it over 180, so now we can work from the bottom of the axle makes it so much easier than getting underneath it. Okay, got the pin in. We're going to drop this in place. You hear it's locked in there. We'll get the lock collar on here. Two tabs down against the C. All the other tabs are up. Now we'll put the stud in. Go ahead and put the dust cap on. Now guess what drops on super easy here and stays in place. Ta-da! Okay, let me caution you against something um, that I found out doing the other side. The instructions say to go ahead and torque these and then to torque this, put the preload on the ball joint itself after you torque these down. So torque these down first, then do that. So when you're torquing these down, you know, you'll torque into 70 foot pounds or whatever the instructions say. That's gonna, as you torque it, it's gonna turn the knuckle this direction and stop it there. Keep the knuckle there once you get these torqued down. Don't move it back because what happens is, look, see those upper ears, those upper tabs? They're moving. So that's changing the preload on the ball joint right there. So keep it there, torque these down, and go ahead and keep the knuckle locked all the way. Then torque this, then lock your tabs, and then move your knuckle. So don't move your knuckle until you get all this done, okay? And then that'll keep the appropriate 10 foot-pounds of preload on the ball joint there, and you won't screw that up. Okay, and I found I had to kind of do this in stages, because if you wrap this end too far underneath there, it tends to jam and you can't get it out. So I just got it to where I could drop it in like right there. Just tighten it a little bit by hand. See, that's too far. I can't get the back part out. Well, I got it out. 
got lucky that time. Rotate a little bit more. Now I put our torque wrench on here. It's in line. So sometimes it takes some finagling to get it to drop in, but there it goes right there. So there's 10 foot-pounds right there. That's it. Okay. 120 inch-pounds. Now we're going to lock our locking rings in before we turn the knuckle. Let's see if we can find a couple that line up. There's one that lines up right there. Okay, so let me get you in close here so you can see what we're doing. This tab right here we're going to bend up. And then we're just going to put the screwdriver in it, take a little hammer, tap it between those ears. And that should hold it in place. They recommend doing two. So I can move the knuckle now that I've locked one in. This isn't going to change my preload. Okay. So let's move the knuckle the other way. And see if we can find another tab to bend up. And there's a half of one. <laughs> it's not very many though. Clunk, 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 clunk. That's a little bit of change there, isn't there? A little bit of play, and that's why they're talking about putting two tabs. So, I can get a tab right here. It's going to be a little hard to get out, but that tab right there I'm going to lock in. Uh, also, I could use this tab right here. Um, but I'd have to kind of smash it that way a little bit. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, that's better. Let's just put a tiny tap on this as well. Get that the other direction. Okay, that's going to help lock that in. Now it shouldn't move as much. Yeah. Now it's not moving at all. Good. You can still move it. It's definitely firm, but I can move it. Of course, we can always adjust this later once we get it on the vehicle. We can always uh, put more um, preload on it if we need to. Now these jack stands have been real handy just because I can flip this over pretty easily with uh, minimal stress. It's kind of a good working height, especially if I'm working on my knees over here. But basically we'll just roll it over. Keep your eye on it so nothing like slips off. This would leave a dent in your toe, obviously, if it fell on your foot. Okay. Now we'll put our Zerks in. Let's just test it, make sure it's plunges before we put it in. These are both eight millimeters, by the way. So this is the grease that Synergy recommends for their ball joints. My first thought was I would just use regular tractor grease, but after considering the hours and money that I put into this project, $30 more seemed kind of insignificant. So I ordered it, and let me tell you, this is like no other grease you've ever seen. It looks like chocolate pudding, but it didn't smell like chocolate pudding, so I didn't try tasting it. Be sure to look for my upcoming video. This is going to be a ton of fun where we actually put axle sleeves to reinforce this axle and we also put gussets on this Dana 44 to reinforce it. The coolest part of the video is going to be where my buddy actually straightens the axle. It's bent and uh, he straightens it so we can sleeve it easily. And now it's very solid. So be sure to look for that video. All right. Hope this video helped you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.